150 pounds. And again, two top-ranked wrestlers. We have Carr ranked first in the country and Trezino second. When you start talking the rankings, you know, Doug, we start talking one, two, three, and four rankings. Boy, there's so little difference in those uh, rankings. Uh, on a given night, it's, it's who's up to par us. Carr has a world of talent. Trezino has talent, experience. This will be a barn burner. Oh, without question. This, uh, you, you said it. Uh, he's so quick. But let me tell you, Scott Trezino's proven himself, too, over the years. Big Ten champion two years ago. He was out last year with a knee injury. NCAA runner-up in third uh, place finishes in previous years. 150 pounds. Carr's having the same trouble he had in the last match we saw him in against Oklahoma. Can't keep his headgear in place. Let's get another one. That's Nate's record in there two years, this year and last. We're going to trade headgear. Right. Out comes Here's a red one. Up. A minute 28 left. That isn't going to work. Uh, it's going to take too much time. We may Give go without that. one. <laughs> Give me that. You guys take this off. There you go. Just go with that if you get that going. Let's go. Here okay, go. they're going to. Yeah, that's. Let's go. No headgear until they get it fixed. Let's go. We're going to try to fix it for us. That's a wise decision. No sense holding everything up. Both boys are ready to go, and sometimes you can negate the, you know, the emotional pitch that each boy is at, uh, waiting out there for a headgear. Uh, it isn't that big of an obstacle until it's time to get it fixed. Scott Trezino, whose brother wrestled at 134. He's a senior from Joliet, Illinois. A nice block off there by Trezino. He kept, he kept Carr away. Back we come to the center. 46 seconds left. Now we're ready with the headgear, or at least ready to try it. My predictions are that may not stay too long because he's had problems with that in another match, if I recall. Of course, now I guess we got the red headgear ready? on. The white go. one he had the problem with before. There goes Trezino's headgear. John Raber shrugged his shoulders. Like I give a blink of the eyes. Well, well, need a good headgear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's thinking right now. I wish I had a couple in my pocket. We have 41 seconds left here. That's the first, I'd say, light moment we've had since we started here. Although the eye of a crowd has figured it's been a light, been pretty lightheaded so far with the Hawks up nine to three. Got 25 seconds left in the first period. If there's no score or warning for stalling at the end of this first period, one of the boys is going to receive a, a stalling warning, which is by rule. Trezino got to his feet, but out of bounds. Oh, no point. He was in behind, but he did not take him to the mat. With supporting parts inbounds, consequently no takedown. Supporting parts. Nine must seconds been, left. The supporting parts, Doug, must have remained inbounds. There was no point scored there at all. One leg was in, but one even out. And, and that's the end of the first period. And uh, with that move, the difference, Nate Carr goes up. I think we asked right. Nate earlier what the rivalry between these two schools and wrestling Scott Trezino means to him. Well, as far as wrestling Iowa, the team, I think right now they're number one and beating them to get us back on top. And I think that would be pretty pleasing because we've been working pretty hard. And, Wrestling Scotty means uh, maybe staying on top for me. So I'm out here to beat him to stay on my weight. As the stand-up escape, the overhook whizzer by uh, Nate Carr. Nice turn in. Before he's, one, before he's one point escape. Oh, there was a nice move uh, by uh, Trezino. Almost got in on a high crotch uh, series there. Have an arm throw, moved in. Trezino, very strong. They're both strong. Oh, they sure are. Two of them. Let's go, gentlemen. I mean, muscular strength. Both boys are, are, are very, like you say, very strong. Uh, I think probably a quickness. Uh, Carr probably has a little that over on Trezino, but they both have great power. Well, now Trezino managed to stay and keep that underhook in there and block that off. Carr wanted to get in and lock up with a bear hug. 
That's twice, I think, that uh, Frisino's managed to shrug that one out of there. Very nicely on defense. My understanding that uh, Carr could have, uh, could have or did put on quite a clinic in Michigan with the uh, individual match scores that he uh, came forth with. He's a good takedown specialist. Almost had a heel pick there. Back. Out of bounds. With exactly two minutes left in the second period. Carr leads by one, but he has the warning. Nate Carr on the left, Scott Trezino in the black. From Iowa, well, he's back to you. This is live Iowa Fieldhouse in Iowa City. That happened on the edge of the mat. Let me get you straight. Red, stay right there. This is referee's time. Wait, stand still. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Ready? Minute 47, second period. Iowa leads nine to three. Carr is there. There he is. Went into the real tough on it. He really can't put a name on that move other than he just he pressured in on him and uh, went down on that single uh, double combination and went right on through Scott for the takedown. And he was going forward and Casino was going backwards. Right. So that's him on his heels, points. I guess you might say. A minute 20. Hey. Hey. Sit out and turn in. There's a two-point takedown. Trezino led up there when he got that escape. Uh, he led up. He got the escape on the sit-out turn in. And, uh, get this up. It's now five to one. I'm not quite certain what what was Come in the down. mind of uh, Scott there when he got out. He, he looked like he just kind of relaxed and let up for a bit. And there was no whistle, of course. Come on uh, down, Red. Yeah, Carr took advantage and went in after for the two. Uh, for the two, and there as long as they had kept both knees in. He was all right, and he did. A minute 13, and counting down, the uh, score is 5-1 to one in favor of Carr. Carr is on top with that far arm bar. Oh, he's got the chicken What's wing on him now? now. He's got that bar in there pretty tough. If he gets above the elbow, that makes it real tough. Now he's got the Don't chicken wing with some parallel out. pressure, Don't perhaps. It's getting close. Now he takes it across the back. Keep in mind, fans, that, that that's got to be perpendicular uh, pressure. It can't be parallel to the long axis of the body. Then it becomes... Not only potential is dangerous, but perhaps could be illegal. We get we get a twisting hammer lock out of it then, which means that the arm comes away from the back uh, too far and consequently is injurious to the arm and or shoulder. It's now a hammer lock. And he's got that hammer lock real tight now. He's got that uh, head blocked off. He may this is going to be a point for Cresino. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there's your move right there. He comes down there real deep. He gets a trip with that move, and there's his takedown. He got in there real deep. That time he managed to trap Cresino's arm against the body with that move, and uh, Cresino couldn't make that underhook work. Interesting to see that. Cresino blocked it twice, and Carr got it in there for third time. Not uh, about. Seven seconds left. Coming down to the end here of the second period. Five to two in favor of Carr. Carr will start in the up position. Here we go. You tap, Iowa State. We will. Come on down, Iowa. Five two. Nate Carr out in front. We've got three minutes of tough down, wrestling Reed. left. 1980 Big Eight champion at 150 pounds. Nate Carr currently ranked number one in the country. 12,750 people here in Iowa Fieldhouse for this rematch of the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones. And out comes Trezino, it's five to three. Number one and number one against number two. Carr has a minute and 30 of riding time and uh, Trezino has two seconds, I should have pointed that out. Gives you an idea that Carr has a potential point ahead of him here if he can maintain that difference. Again, you see Carr trying to get under for that lockup. One hundred and fifty pounds. At the end of this match, we're going to have a break. They take a break in Iowa City before the last five matches. Have time to catch our breath and look back at a few things and ahead of a few others. And a profile on Randy Lewis and uh, Eddie Bannock. Here's a 
You're seeing the Iowa State coach Harold Nichols on his feet. Time has been called here. I think that Scott Frazino has a nosebleed. You know, I don't know if it's a nose or it's a, 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 a scratch of it's some kind on the chin. Here, when you show blood, you don't run the timeout clock, right? Well, it, on a nosebleed, you would not. Uh, yeah, but this may be some of the type yeah. of a wound. I really can't tell. Uh, Why is that? Because it's you don't. It's hard to fake blood. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> That's Jay Robinson. This will be the final party who's, and Chuck Yagla behind him. Two assistant coaches at Iowa. In the middle of a marvelously successful program. And uh, Iowa team physician is out there looking over Scott Casino. That's Chuck Yagla. Two-time national champion, a world champion. That's correct. Freestyle. Just a little cut under your chin. We're ready to go. Again, with two minutes, five seconds to go. Third period, it's car five, Trezino three. Down, that car down. is so quick. And Trezino is very solid. He's got it. He sure go, is. Go, Technician, go. he got it on the leg, you see? He did. He got the left with it. Has he got the two? Not yet. No points have been given yet, I don't believe. No, nothing. Well, let's look at it. Right now, he gets in there real tough on that, on that knee for that high crotch. He comes in, he gets the lift with it, takes Nate to the mat, but uh, there, Nate's uh, supporting parts go out, and they're facing off no points. It was close, but they were off. A minute 30 left. And we're going down to the end again here. <laughs> right to the wire. Again, he locks up. And for the third time in four tries, Trezino manages to shrug him out of there. Well, Trezino made a nice move on that last one and, and almost made it work for the two. Uh, it was a tough judgment call, but uh, uh, you could see for yourself there on the screen there were not a bound situation took place. Here comes Stan right Gable about talking about to John Rayburn. Back out of circle, I'm in contact, a 10-foot circle. That's right. Okay. I'm just, I think Carr does it quite a bit. I just okay. it out. All right. Here we go. Dan wants John Raber to take a look at Carr on the whistle to see whether he backs out. Five to three. There, yes, a car does have a warning. He locked up in a bear hug. But, and it got him yeah, two. He did, he a bear hug with a trip. Got his two point takedown. That's the sort of thing that. Uh, well, he wanted to get in there in that, in that upper body uh, a move, Doug. And Kind of thing that I was used to, that because that's what the Bannock boys do. Oh, without question, there was a sit-out uh, turn in uh, by Scott, but I think he goes back down. Let's get that thing fixed. We're gonna have to fix it. No points were scored there. I think he goes back down. Let's see it again. Here comes your move, right and there. Then he got the other head. arm under. He got underneath. Got his lock. He isn't really lock secured, but he's in under the double hook, so to speak, with the bear hug. Got that trip on that near leg, and uh, Scott, of course, wisely goes belly down, so he doesn't get caught on his back for some fall points. And it's car seven, Trezino three. He has, car has a minute 47 seconds of riding time. Trezino has two seconds. Right now then we've got a seven three score, car out in front. Beat. Must be a split lip. Scott Trezino beat Oklahoma's uh, talented Roger Frizzell, you know, there. Oh, he's a good one. Well, you don't, you don't win. Uh, There's Chris Campbell too. Back in uh, the field house where he was a great wrestler for the Hawkeyes. We're just now on the Iowa State side. I was just going to mention here, Doug, that uh, Trezino, having played second and third in that national tournament on two uh, different years, that tells us a great deal about what kind of talent we're looking at here. And he tonight. came as close as you can come to a national championship without actually winning one because he went to a referee's decision after an overtime. That's correct. In his sophomore year against uh, the boy from Oregon State, Hicks. And was, needless to say, a disappointed loser. Dan Hicks, and that uh, was at Iowa State. Right. 44 seconds are left here. There's the team score. I hope we're giving it often enough for you. People, I know you might come in late and not know what the score is and wonder when we're going to say it. Iowa 9, Iowa State 3. From Brazil, so, so tried low. to get out, couldn't. That may be a... One point red. One point red. A Show kick. Come on down. Sh a shoulder roll attempt there by uh, Trezino, but he may have indicated unnecessary roughness. A uh, kick, I think. A kick. One, 
Okay. Oh, there he dropped right into a double, and there comes a throw as a counter move by Carr. No point scored. Two nice moves by both boys. Nice double shot by Trezino and a nice counter move on a, on a, on a body uh, throw by uh, Carr. 23 seconds left. Carr does have the potential riding time. Eight to four. You know, you just shudder when you're looking at two boys with the ability that we see out here tonight because one little move and it's five points or it's all over. Oof. Not but, sure with a four-point lead. <laughs> well, the kind of move you'd expect Nate to make, but he was willing to do it. A little head shock, show, uh, body throw there by uh, Carr near the mat's edge. Yeah, you know, you look at an eight to four score, you think you're comfortably ahead and got things under control, but uh, not in this kind of competition. We're down to the end, and it looks like an Iowa State marker this time. For the second time this year, Scott Cusino goes down to defeat against Nate Carr of the Cyclones. With riding time, the score is 9-4 to four in favor of Carr. It's three points for the Cyclones now. And at the end of 150 pounds, Iowa 9 and the Cyclones 6. I'm not sure where the two teams hope to be at this point, but I know the Hawks have to be happy that they got victories from Barry Davis at 118 pounds over Mike Picosi and at 142 pounds where Lenny Zaleski beat Dave Brown. Now we're going to have a break here. Let's look back. Oh, this uh, is an intermission here at Iowa Fieldhouse in our live coverage, and we're going to take a look back at the first five. They're at 118 pounds. Boy, that was a big one. Oh, it sure was, Doug. Uh, with that five-point move right off the bat uh, by Davis over Picozzi, he put Picozzi down where it was catch-up wrestling the remainder of the match for him. That's right, and Picozzi had no takedowns in that match, 11 to 5. Then at 126, it was another big one. There was Riley. He got a good effort from his opponent, John Thorne, but again, there, was a, there were a couple of fine takedowns in there, four of them, in fact, for Riley. Takedowns were the difference in that particular match. And it was 11 to 7. Then... Jim Gibbons, after being thrown for a five-point move in the first period, came back and defeated Mark Trezino 15-8 to, to put the Cyclones on the board. And then in the big rematch at 142, Lenny Zaleski got all the takedowns, two of them, and beat Dave Brown 8-4. to four. That was a major swing match. Made revenge for the last match they had against each other. And you just saw that 150-pound match between Nate Carr and Scott Trezino with Carr with some flashy work. Got all the takedowns, three takedowns, one escape and a penalty point to Trezino's four escapes, nine to four with riding time. And that's